that's di uh, di District of Columbia, and that's there's no rights in the District of Columbia. But anyways. Yeah, so um, what did you want to talk about, or what did you get any updates about any of the course or cases that you've spoken to in the past? Well, um, I was going to talk about bills of attainder today. Oh, good. Okay, so I'm going to do that little uh, um, write-up that we have to announce to make sure that everybody is on board with what we're doing here. And then we can start up. How's that sound? Perfect. Okay, I'll grow and grab it. So uh, there's been people that have been wondering about how to actually set up your own common law court, and I, I was I was going to talk about that next week. Um, so uh, for anybody that's interested in that, um, we can talk about that next week. Um, and uh, and this week we're going to talk about bills of attainder. Okay, good. I can't wait to hear what you have to say. Okay, here we go. This meeting is private, bearing false witness, misrepresentation, and posting inflammatory rhetoric in public forums is forbidden and shall be addressed in an, in an appropriate manner. To eliminate all conflict and false allegations, is there anyone in attendance at tonight's meeting that is a member or agent of any law enforcement agency of the federal, state, county, city, or township agencies present. Okay, good. This is also for notaries, poll workers, school board members, anyone who signed an oath to a defamatory government. Please raise your hand, say your name, state your position. And I hope somebody started the recording because I just screwed up by not doing that. Is the recording going? Should I double check that? It says it's being recorded. Thank you. I'll continue. This meeting is private, bearing false witness, misrepresentation, posting inflammatory rhetoric in public forums is forbidden and shall be addressed in an appropriate manner. To eliminate all conflict and false allegations, is there anyone in attendance at today's meeting that is a member of or agent of any law enforcement agency of the federal, state, county, city, or township agency present? This is also for the notary, pool worker, school board member, anyone who has signed an oath to the de facto government. Raise your hand, say your name, and state your position. Great, well, last time. This meeting is private, bearing false witness, misrepresentation, and posting inflammatory rhetoric in public forum is forbidden and shall be addressed in an appropriate manner. To eliminate all conflict and false allegations, is there anyone in attendance at today's meeting that is a member or agent of any law enforcement agency of the federal, state, county, city, or township agency present? Perfect. This is also for the notary, poll workers, school board members, anyone who has signed an oath to the de facto government. Raise your hand, say your name, and state your position. No one, that's great. Go ahead, Glenn. All right, well, uh, maybe I will, uh, let me find something to share.
this is actually a lawsuit. I'm, I've got it all ready to go. I, I was going to file it today, and um, I didn't uh, get it done today, so it's going to get filed on Monday. And um, so what this is is the... Um, Uh, county tax assessors think that they can extort money from me. And so um, um, so I'm not going to go through all of it, but I'm going to go through the stuff that lays the foundation and talks about the bills of attainder, okay, because it's all a bill of attainder. And uh, so this action is brought as a collateral attack on a void judgment made by the bought and paid for a clerk masquerading as a judge Patricia Coleman Byers in conspiracy with bar members named herein and their Montag County of Montag Mafia handlers. Um, avoid judgment is one which from its inception was a complete nullity and without legal effect. Avoid judgment and so far as it purports to be a pronouncement of a court is an absolute nullity. Avoid order may be attacked either directly or collaterally at any time. Avoid judgment is one from which its inception is and forever continues to absolutely null without legal efficacy, ineffectual to bind the parties or to support a right of no legal force and effect, whatever, incapable of enforcement in any matter to any degree. And so um, so they they actually got a judgment, and and so it's avoid judgment, and I'll, I'll explain why uh, as we go through, because it's a bill of attainder. Well, it's deny due process, all sorts of crap. Anyways, um, this uh, District of Columbia so-called corporate, so-called court, okay, and that's what I call a matter of fact, if you look at the footer, demand for relief to the District of Columbia clerks selling their just us. I, I'd like to get up in their face. If there's anything I've learned, and, and we'll see what their response is to this, but if there's anything I've learned is the more up in their face you get, if you're right, they respect it. And uh, I've never had a judge be so nice to me as when I told him I had nothing but contempt for you and your so-called court. You have an inferior court of limited jurisdiction, and everything you do is Brutum Pullman. Brutum Pullman means an empty noise. And I felt guilty afterwards they were so nice to me. <laughs> Anyways, so... Um, comes now demand, demanding that the District of Columbia clerks in this corporate so-called court selling their justice provide relief against these U.S. citizen wrongdoers named herein by regulating their property as required by Article 4, Section 3, Clause 3. And the Congress shall have power to dispose of and make all needful rules and regulations respecting the territory or other property belonging to the United States, which is the supreme law of the land. Um, and then I go through why... They have to, oh, well, we'll go through that. Um, your code of law for the, and it's all, they're all code of law for the District of Columbia. They call it United States Code now, and that's deceptive, actually, because it's a code of law for the District of Columbia, and that's what Congress passed in 1901. Um, anyways, Title 28, Section 1331, Federal Question, because taxation of land originated with an act of Congress under Chapter um, 55, no, 45. Chapter 45, approved August 5th, 1861, at 12 Stat 292. And under your code of law for the District of Columbia, 28 U.S.C. 1332, diversity of citizenship, because all wrongdoers are foreign U.S. citizens required by Texas codes under the Commerce Clause, and the demand fails to be a U.S. citizen as described herein. And this is that, and we've talked about this before, National Mutual Insurance Company versus Tidewater Transport Company, U.S. Supreme Court, 1948. We hold that the District of Columbia is not a state within Article 3 of the Constitution. In other words, cases between citizens of the district and those of the states who are not included in the catalog of controversies over which Congress could give jurisdiction to the federal courts by virtue of Article 3. So I'm not going to get an Article 3 court. I'm not even asking for it. I'm telling them to take care of business. Uh, anyways... Uh, under your code of law for the District of Columbia, 28 U.S.C. 1343, civil rights, because wrongdoers are engaged in the theft of the demandant's land, uh, and the demandant has an unlimited right to own land. 
under the code of law for the District of Columbia, Title 28, 1355, forfeiture because the wrongdoers are engaging in the theft of the demandant's land, and under your code of law for the District of Columbia, 28 U.S.C. 1361, uh, a petition for writ of mandamus to order Chad Yarbrough to do his duty to arrest the wrongdoers for their felonies, and Leah Simonton to do her duty to prosecute their felonies. Because wrongdoers therein are violating federally protected rights under color of law, conspiring to threaten, coerce, injure, intimidate the demandant in the free exercise of his right to own land and his right to ignore their color of law codes, subjecting the demandant to their satanic religious ceremony with their Vatican minor estate and their lies and their fraud and their deception. Uh, converting the demandant's land under color of law with their forced rendering scam, rendering the demandant's land for taxation without any authority, pursuant to their Texas tax code form 50-141, general real property rendition of taxable property, published by the Texas Controller of Public Accounts impersonating a government employee uh, to facilitate the theft of the demandant's land, participating in extortion racket under color of law, demanding fake money, or the mafia unlawfully appropriate, engage in theft of the demandant's land. Um, selling the demandant to involuntary servitude under color of law to force them to work for them for nothing to pay their tax extortion scam, because their objective is to is uh, from the beginning was to enslave the demandant, as evidenced by their Roman law capitus diminutio, because they're spelling the name in all block capital letters, which is a slave under Roman law, and uh, capitus diminutio uh, is uh, the diminishing of status through the use of capitalization in Roman law, a diminishing or abridgment of personality, a loss or curtailment of a man's status, uh, capitus diminutio maxima is uh, all block capital letters, the highest and most comprehensive loss of status. This occurred when a man's condition was changed from one of freedom to one of bondage, when he became a slave. And that's Black's Law Dictionary, 4th edition. And, and they are operating under Roman law. Uh, civil law, Roman law, Roman civil law, convertible phrases, meaning the same system of jurisprudence, that rule of action which every particular nation, commonwealth, or city has established peculiarly for itself, more properly called municipal law. Black's Law Dictionary, 4th edition. Uh, making false and fictitious records, 18 U.S.C. 2073, by falsely accusing the demandant of being a minor state, falsely rendering the demandant's land, using Form 50-141, general rendition, uh, general real property rendition of taxable property, published by the Texas Controller of Public Accounts, and creating a fake tax lien under color of law making false statements in court when the demandant is, uh, uh, that the demandant is a minor estate, that the demandant is a U.S. citizen, commercial entity under the Commerce Clause, falsely rendering the demandant's land for taxation, violating a government patent because the demandant brought forward all the rights and privileges of the original land patent, false entries and reports of money or securities by falsely claiming that the demandant owes them something and creating a false tax lien, um, Attempted murder because they intend to murder the demandant when he exercises right to resist their slavery with lethal force if necessary. Uh, and perjury of oath uh, because they're bringing the District of Columbia outside a maximum of 10 miles square in violation of Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17 to place the demandant under the Commerce Clause, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 3, peonage, sending threats through the mail, enticing to slavery because when the demandant exercises his right to resist their slavery, and their extortion racket and selling his land with lethal force if necessary, and they fail to murder the demandant, their mafia district of Columbia so-called courts will sell the demandant into slavery under the Texas kangaroo courts with a fake quasi-contract as collateral for their Vatican minor estate. Official oppression, these are all Texas crimes now. Official oppression, tampering with government records, felony uh, over 150 but less than 300,000 because uh, there's a storage unit on the land full of the demandant's property, Perjury of oath, simulating a legal process, bear tree, when the coward bar members sent an unsigned anonymous final notice before a suit, notice to their slave, Winningham Glenn, saying, I have recommended to my client that a lawsuit be filed against you seeking foreclosure of the tax lien. A true copy of which is attached here to all of which is incorporated here and by reference in its entirety. Impersonating a public servants, because when they go outside their proper jurisdiction, they cease to represent the government. An officer who acts in violation of the Constitution ceases to represent the government. Um, 
there's some court cases, and they and they 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 uh, this is if government officials attempt to enforce an unconstitutional law, sovereign immunity does not prevent people from uh, the law harms them from suing those officials in their individual capacity for injunctive relief. This is because they're not acting on behalf of the state. And so this is, this is, it's going to go to a bill of attainer and this is your remedy. Okay. So you file what I would do is if anybody is dealing with any of these bill of attainers and they're all bill of attainers. Okay. Anybody has deals with the court. I can just about guarantee you that it's a bill of attainer. And so, um, what you, again, you have to, what I would do is file a counter, uh, um, a, um, collateral attack and, 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 and you go after them personally. And, uh, yeah, that's what I would do. Matter of fact, I'm, I'm, I'm working with a friend of mine that he's under attack right now. And, uh, we're, we're, he's going to have another hearing. We're going to see, we did something. We're going to see what they do in the next hearing. Um, and then we'll probably prepare a collateral attack. It's been settled that the 11th Amendment prize no shield for state officials confronted by a claim that he has deprived another of a federal right under color of state law. Abuse of official capacity with improper use of government resources, computers, databases, facilities, with their force rendering extortion racket um, by the County of Montag Mafia and their uh, Montag County Appraisal District Mafia. Um, and so then what I do is this so-called court is a district of Columbia Corporation ev evidenced by its use of a zip code, uh, one of federal 10 federal sub-district regions in the District of Columbia, under the Commerce Clause, and this is uh, the Code of Law for the District of Columbia 31 Stat 1190. The said Supreme Court shall divide the district into 10 sub-districts and prescribe the place. So they divide, There's a, the, that's, that's the federal regions. And your demands for Federal Reserve notes, securities, which are authorized for the District of Columbia only under the Commerce Clause, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 3. And that's this is the Gold Reserve Act, and this is the uh, where it's codified, uh, 12 U.S.C. 411. Federal Reserve notes to be issued at the discretion of the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System for the purpose of making advances to Federal Reserve Banks through the Federal Reserve Agents as here and after set forth and for no other purpose or authorized. And if you go to the Gold Reserve Act, United States means government of the United States. And the term currency of the government of the United States means currency which is legal tender in the government of the United States and includes United States notes, treasury notes, gold certificates, silver certificates, Federal Reserve notes, circulating notes of the Federal Reserve banks and national banking associations. So again, that's the District of Columbia. <clears throat> Anyways, I, I, I kind of rail on them here that this District of Columbia so-called court is busy assaulting the demandant with the zip code so they can justify assaulting the demandant with the Commerce Clause with a plenary jurisdiction where there are no rights. And that's, again, a, another site from that same case, uh, National Mutual Insurance Company versus Tidewater Transfer Company. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to skip ahead now. Um, oh, maybe I'll throw in this stuff here, too. Will Livingston, who ratified this Constitution for the United States of America on behalf of New Jersey, 18 December 1787, is the demandant's fourth great uncle, which means the demandant is posterity is found in the preamble and is entitled to right of blood because wrongdoers are using their civil laws against the demandant. And uh, under the maximum of law, no civil law can violate right of blood. Uh, the right of blood and kindred cannot be destroyed by any civil law. And the wrongdoers are operating under power which is derived from the demandant as posterity. The power which is derived cannot be greater than that from which it is derived. And the Supreme Court of the United States has said it's impossible for the demandant to, quote, confer a sovereignty which will extend over him. And this is uh, uh, McCullough versus Maryland, uh, 1815. Um, um, and we, the people, failed to be U.S. citizens because a U.S. citizen failed to exist when the Constitution was written. The term citizen of the United States must be understood to intend those who were citizens of a state as such after the Union had commenced and the several states had assumed their sovereignties. Before this period, there was no citizens of the United States. And it might be correctly said there is no such thing as a citizen of the United States. Um, this is ex parte Frank Knowles. A citizen of any one of the states of the Union is held to be called a citizen of the United States, although technically and abstractly, uh, there is no such thing. <laughs> Anyways, I kind of reel on them here, but uh, so let's go on to the um, 
the bills of attainder. Bar members are deemed to know the law. They know exactly what they're doing. All wrongdoers have waived their immunity. And I won't go into this is all the facts. The law. So the Texas tax code requires cash or its equivalent for their taxes, which means Federal Reserve notes. And uh, this is market value means the price at which property would transfer for cash or its equivalent under prevailing market conditions. And um, and then um, income, income method of, uh, of appraisal, that's taken in Section 104 definitions, Texas tax code. Um, and then the income method of appraisal um, talks about cash in there, too. Where is it? Oh, here we go. Uh, paragraph B right here. If developing income and expense statements and cash flow projections, the chief appraiser should consider. So cash flow projections. So they've uh, they've rendered the property under Texas. Uh, so as explained uh, in the demandants notice and demand. See, I served them a notice and demand that was served on the wrong doors. Sorry. Sorry, when did you get that off to him? 2021. Um, taxable land and uh, is land used for the production of income or controlled uh, or managed as a fiduciary rendition. And so used for the production of income. Uh, which means that a man fails to qualify for rendition, as explained in the notice and demand, because income is corporate profits. This is a Supreme Court case, Eisner versus McComber. Now, I looked this case up in the actual law books, and the bold and underlining is in the original. You never see that, and it's, it's definitely in the original. And so income is derived from capital, the gain derived from capital. Here we have the essential matter, not a gain accruing to capital, not a growth or increment of value on in the investment, but a gain, a profit, something of exchangeable value severed from the capital, however invested or employed, and coming in and being derived, that is received or drawn by the recipient for his separate use, benefit, and disposal. That's, that's income derived from property. Nothing else answers the description. And then... Um, The, grant, the face of the grant deed and bill of exchange shows that a man is a Texas national who fails to be a CISTK trust slash U.S. citizen. The demandant converted silver to land on the bill of exchange, which means it's a contract because there's two signatures uh, with and no priv uh, uh, privileges were accepted. Uh, this is a uh, U.S. versus Carlisle, 1873. The rights of sovereignty extend to pers all persons and things not privileged that are within the territory like the privilege of discharging debt with limited liability with Federal Reserve notes. There's a distinction between the debt discharged and one paid. When discharged, the debt still exists, though divested of its character as a legal obligation during the operation of the discharge. You know, they lay awake at night dreaming this shit up. But this county of Montag have demonstrated their intent to interfere with the private contract in violation of Article 1, Section 10, Clause 1. Uh, and that talks about... Um, um, no state shall uh, or law impairing the obligation of contracts. The minor estate has is created by the Vatican by the Sesta K V Act of 1666, and this is uh, Tomlin's Law Dictionary, uh, 1835 edition, Volume Two, under the definition of Mort Main. Yet still, it was found difficult to set bounds to ecclesiastical ingenuity. That's the Roman cult, folks. For when they were driven out of all their former holes, they divided the new method of conveyance. That's talking about land. By which the lands were granted not to themselves directly, but to nominal fiat fees to the use of the religious houses. Thus distinguishing between the possession and the use. And use is short for usufruct. And receiving the actual profits while a season of the land remained in the nominal fiat fee, who was held by the courts of equity, then under the direction of the clergy, that's the Roman cult folks, isn't that convenient? They get to decide. To be bound and conscious to account to assist use for the rents and emoluments of the estate. That's taxes. 
And it is to these inventions that our practitioners are indebted for the introduction of uses and trusts, the foundation of modern conveyancing, and a use which was brought into America with the Code of Law for the District of Columbia at 31 Stat 1432, which says the legal estate to be an assist a use, which is a use, uh, I'll talk about it here in a minute, which is talking about land titles. And a use is short for usufruct under Roman law, which is a type of a trust. And a U.S. citizen minor estate entity is a taxpayer. And there's some, these are actually summaries from these court cases. There's no actual, they're summaries. Uh, anyways, as the satanic sorcerers peddling pharmaceuticals, the Greek derivative of the word sorcery is pharmakeus, in a hospital, a satanic religious order, and here's some uh, Tomlin's Law Dictionary definition showing that the hospital is a religious, says here, Maison du, a house of God, a monastery, religious house, or hospital. Hospitalers were the knights of a religious order, so-called because they built a hospital at Jerusalem. Contra formam colosianus, a writ that lay where a man had given lands of perpetual alms to any lay houses of religion. As to an abbot and convent or the warden or master of any hospital. So that's a house of religion. Did you know that? Did you know that that's, that's, that's yeah, don't get me going. I'm going to step aside. I'll be back in a second. Okay, created some securities when the demand was born as evidenced by the birth certificate. Although the birth certificate itself fails to be a security according to Yellen's website, then that's true. If you go to Yellen's website and you do a search for birth certificate, um, it, it says on there that it's not a security. It's just evidence that there's a security that exists. Anyways, Definitions. This is the Federal Tax Lien Act of 1966 at Public Law 89-719, 80 Stat 1130 to 1131. Security means, the term security means any bond, venture, note, or certificate or other indebtedness, evidence of indebtedness issued by a corporation or a gov government or political subdivision thereof. Um, with interest coupons or in registered form, share of stock, voting trust certificate, or any certificate of interest or participation in, certificate of deposit or receipt for temporary interim certificate for, or warrant or right to subscribe to or purchase any of the foregoing. Negotiable instrument or money. Okay. So it's a security. So they created a security when you're born and they deposited into a treasury direct account and deposited them into a treasury direct account in conspiracy with wrongdoer Janet Yellen and her predecessors under their minor estate entity, Glenn Winningham Fern, putting the demandant into bondage and enslaving the demandant as collateral for their minor estate as described in 31 CFR 363.6. And um, it says entity means any owner of a treasury direct account that is not an individual. Entity is a sole proprietorship, partnership, corporation, limited liability company, or a professional limited liability company trust, the estate of a decedent, or the estate of a living person, such as an incompetent or a minor. A minor means any individual under the age of 18 years. The term minor also is also used to refer to an individual who has attained the age of 18 years, but has not yet taken control of the securities contained in his or her minor account. So, there you go, right there. 
and that these County of Montag and Bowie Independent School District Mafia are assaulting the demandant with to put the demandant under the Commerce Clause, Article 1, Section 8, Clause 3, so they can justify bringing the District of Columbia outside a maximum of 10 miles square in violation of Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17, because none of them have any intention of honoring their oaths of office. All regulations, including 31 CFR 363.6, are for property of the United States, and this is Article 4, Section 3, Clause 2. The Congress shall have power to dispose of and make all needful rules and regulations respecting the territory or other property belonging to the United States. So a slave is owned and therefore a property, and a U.S. citizen is a business entity. And this is um, 102 Stat 1344, Public Law 100-418, August 23, 1988. The term United States business means a United States citizen and includes the minor state, and as further evidence, they're using the Commerce Clause to bring the District of Columbia outside, not exceeding 10 miles square, in violation of Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17. And this is that case, National Mutual Insurance Company versus Tidewater Transfer Company. Uh, in other words, Congress has exclusive legislative jurisdiction over citizens of Washington, District of Columbia, and through their plenary power, plenary is dictatorship, nationally covers those citizens, even one on one of the several states, as the district expands for the purpose of regulating its citizens wherever they go throughout the states of the Union. The minor estate and the Texas tax code is a bill of pains and penalties, which is similar to a bill of attainder and is unconstitutional. A bill of attainder means a legislative act, no matter what their form, that apply either to named individuals, in my case, Glenn Winningham Fern in all block capital letters, or to easily ascertainable members of a group, okay, the, the so-called Patriot Act, okay? There's all of that stuff. It's, it's all bills of attainder. Any person, <laughs> that's a group, in such a way as to inflict punish on them without a judicial trial. So, so um, inflict punishment on them in such a way as uh, without a judicial trial, a bill of attainder, a special legislative act prescribing punishment without a trial for a specific person or group. Bills of attainder are prohibited by the U.S. Constitution, Article 1, Section 9, Clause 3, and Article 1, Section 10, Clause 1, also termed act of attainder. Uh, that's uh, Black's Law Dictionary, 8th edition, a bill of pains and penalties. A bill of pains and penalties, the legislative act, though similar to a bill of attainder, prescribes punishment less severe than capital punishment. A bill of attainder is the death sentence. Bill of pains and penalties are included in the U.S. Constitution's ban on bills of attainder. Um, and so penalties, bill of pains and penalties, they call it the Texas Penal Code. Penalties, penal code, that's the same word, only different versions of the same word. The 97th District Court might be a superior court of general jurisdiction under some circumstances. Um, a court of general jurisdiction is presumed to be acting within its jurisdiction till a contrary is shown. But when a superior court of general jurisdiction undertakes anything that is in derogation of common law, it becomes quad hoc, an inferior court of limited jurisdiction. And the Texas tax code has absolutely nothing to do with common law. And this is American Jurisprudence, uh, Book 20, uh, section 103, second edition, section we there. When therefore a court of general jurisdiction proceeds under a special statute, it becomes a court of limited jurisdiction for the purposes of such proceeding. Accordingly, where a court of general jurisdiction undertakes to carry out a special power, a decision made in the exercise of such power is treated as a ruling of a court of limited jurisdiction and the presumption applicable to a court of general jurisdiction that it acted within the scope of this jurisdiction does not apply. It is familiar law that when a special statutory authority in derogation of common law is conferred on courts of general jurisdiction, such a court of general jurisdiction becomes quad hoc, a court of inferior or limited jurisdiction. And these are Alabama court cases. Therefore, it is actually an administrative hearing for the Texas tax code. A ministerial act is an act that a public officer is required to perform in a prescribed manner in obedience to the mandate of legal authority and without regard to his own judgment or opinion concerning such acts proprietary or impropriety. Uh, when a given state of facts exists, 
Discretion, on the other hand, is a power conferred on public functionaries to act according to the dictates of their own judgment. And that's um, California appeals case. When acting to enforce a statute and a subsequent amendments to the present date, the judge of municipal court is acting as an administrative officer and not in a judicial capacity. Courts administering and enforcing statutes do not act judicially. Then, by definition, that's a bill of attainder. But merely ministerially, but merely acts as an extension as an agent for the involved agency. So the issue is, is, is bring up the issue of the bill of attainder. And, and in fact, what, you know, I mean, really what you should do is sue them in their private capacity as a collateral attack in the federal courts, you know, and, you know, we'll see. I mean, a lot of the courts are very corrupt these days. And so, you know, it's hard to say, you know, what will happen. That's why I'm, I'm bringing this action and I'm telling them, you know, that um, they att- intend to murder me. So we'll see what happens. Judges who become involved in enforcement of a mere s- statute, civil or criminal in nature, and otherwise act as mere clerks of the involved nature. Okay, so mere statutes, all statutes, not just some of them, all of them. Which is actually an executive agency working for the executive branch. The word administrative is synonymous with the word executive. The word administrative connotes of or pertains to administration, especially management as by managing or conducting or superintending the exec- execution, application, or conduct of persons or things. Um, Black's Law Dictionary, 6th edition. Um, those acts, the thus administrative acts are those acts which are necessary to be done to carry out legislative policies and purposes already declared by the legislative body. Uh, it is... In fact, it is common to use the two words in tandem, which means Patricia Coleman Byers failed to be a judge for that proceeding, but was actually a bought and paid for a clerk masquerading as a judge and cannot do anything judicial. Ministerial officers are incompetent to receive grants of judicial power under the legislature. Their acts and attempts attempting to exercise such power are necessarily nullities which means it's a bill of pains and penalties in violation of the Supreme Law of the Land, Article 1, Section 9, Clause 3, and Article 10, Clause 1. Beca- uh, because there's no judge as defined by Article 3 of the Constitution, but only an administrator working for the executive branch was there. No bill of attainer or ex post facto law shall be passed. Notwithstanding any state constitution or law, Article 6, Clause 2, this Constitution and the laws of the United States which shall be made in pursuance thereof, and all treaties made which shall be made under the authority of the United States shall be the supreme law of the land, and the judges in every state shall be bound thereby anything in the constitutional laws of any state to the contrary notwithstanding. When the founders were talking about bills of attainder in the Constitution and non-judicial trials, they were talking about Article Three judges and an executive administrator fails to be an Article Three judge. And recently, the Supreme Court even said that only an Article Three judge can do anything affecting life, liberty, or property. And this is um, 21. So this is a U.S. Supreme Court Justice Thomas concurring. Um, cases involving deprivation or transfer of life, liberty, or property constitute a core of cases that must be resolved by Article Three courts which has been previously affirmed on numerous cases. This is Williams versus United States, 1933, where a controversy is such a character as to require the exercise of the judicial power defined by Article 3, jurisdiction thereof, can be conferred only on courts established in virtue of that article, and Congress is without power to vest that judicial power in any other judicial tribunal, or, of course, in an executive officer, administrative, or executive board, since they are incapable of receiving it. To be that statutes that would deprive a citizen of right of person or property without a regular trial according to the course and usage of common law would not be the law of the land. And the Montag County Sheriff, under instructions from the County of Montag Mafia, was notified has notified the demand that they're selling the demand's land to satisfy their color of law tax lien. Um, anyways, so uh, that's about it. Um, so anybody, you could use this for any any case. Any of these cases that are going on nowadays, they're all bills of attainder. And that's why they deny due process. They do it on a routine basis. 
you know, you can you can lay a foundation by doing challenges to jurisdiction. They're going to ignore it because uh, they're just a bunch of thieves and pirates. <coughs> Excuse me. But um, so I am I am filing a lawsuit. This is uh, part of the lawsuit that I'm filing as a collateral attack uh, against these mafia. And um, relief required. Demand it requires that Chad Bar Yarborough, he's the FBI special agent in charge, be ordered to do his duty to arrest the Montag County Mafia wrongdoer thieves. And Leah Simonton be ordered to do her duty to prosecute them for their felonies, especially the bought and paid for a clerk selling their justice and the bar member conspirators that sold the demand into slavery, some of which, but not all, is described in the 78 criminal complaints. And so uh, I filed 78 criminal complaints into the case, and then I did a demand to disqualify the judge, and he disappeared. <laughs> that was, that was, um, um, oh, what was his name? The other, the other judge that was, and then Patricia Coleman Byers replaced him. But this is interesting. She took her oath of office like two weeks before she took over the case, or immediately almost when she took over the case. Anyways, I've got a common law court judgment that um, is going to be filed into the uh, is it's it's attached to this too, by the way, and so uh, they're going to have a problem. We'll see what happens. You know, I'm kind of belligerent with the court, but I always get belligerent, and I found that um, if you do it the right way, they respect it. So we'll see what happens. I think I'm bringing up some pretty important issues, and uh, we'll see. You know, that's all I can say. Yeah, it's uh, excellent. Uh, very, uh, you brought point every every aspect. You didn't bring back up the fact that they're not allowed to even own land. They're not allowed to own land? Well, the banks what? aren't allowed to own land. So, um, but I guess the communities and and states are, aren't they? Well, I, I'm, I'm not even the corporations. I, I'm not sure about that. But um, And that's not the issue that I'm trying to bring up right now. I'm just bringing up the fact that it's a bill of attainder and, and, and they're a bunch of thieves and pirates and it's a mafia. And so um, um, I'll bet you, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, you know, hopefully the FBI goes over there and arrests them. If they do, oh. that'll be a home run. I hope so. Yes. Yeah. So, what's your bill of or your collateral attack bill look like? Have you got that? Um, any numbers that you're thinking about right now? Well, the common law court says I get a billion dollars in silver, one billion silver eagles, or equivalent in Federal Reserve notes. So, the yes. common law court decision said I get a bill, and so my attitude is, is I, I you know, uh, is that. Um, you know, my land's for sale. It's for sale the right money. A bill. That's what I want. It's a bill. Uh, you know, I, I paid 500 bucks for it, but, um, but if they want it, they want it so bad, the price is a bill. And, uh, so, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, I don't think they can argue with the common law court decision, but so we'll see. Um, uh, we went through the common law court decisions and other, and other proceedings. And next week, we're going to talk about how you can set up your own common law court. And um, so I don't want to touch on that too much right now because that will be something we can talk about next week. Okay, we'll look forward to that. I just unmuted everybody. So if anybody has any questions about what um, Glenn's bringing forth, if you uh, have any um, examples of what you might be working on, uh, please let us know. All of the all of the codes, all of the statutes are are bills of attainder, uh, but you got to build a case and show that it is. Um, and so uh, you know, as with anything, you got to prove it. And uh, so um, I I laid a foundation by saying I demanded to see a bona fide contract in the notice and demand that I sent them. Um, I don't know. Do we want to go through that? Uh, we can if you want. Yeah. I um, see it if you have time for it okay we can do that let me see if i can pull that up 
The um, I usually am, I'm, I'm very proactive about things. If uh, my attitude is the best defense is a good offense, it's warfare, okay? And so um, it's always warfare. Uh, they're, they're, they're making war on you, and, and so you got to uh, – this is the notice and demand that I sent them. Registered mail. When I'm when I'm really building the case against them, that's what I use is registered mail because registered mail is it's kept under lock and key, and the post office keeps a chain of custody, so so um, they can't say they didn't get it or they can't say that it was tampered with or something. <clears throat> so um, it's it's actually my standard notice and demand that I send out. And I'll be glad to send the word file, you know, of this if you, if you want it. If you have some issues, if you in the U.S. now this this stuff won't work in communist Canada. We don't you don't have the protections that that we do here in America. The founding fathers were just absolutely brilliant, and um, and there's so much stuff in there that you can use that is just absolutely fatal to anything they try and do. Most people don't have a clue about what the Constitution says or how to use it or anything. It's really sad. Were you going to say something, uh, Lori? No, um, I was just going to reiterate that uh, they've been doing some 14th Amendment studies here in the morning. So people are becoming aware, but yeah, it's not known half, not nearly enough. So that's one of the things I say. Matter of fact, I can pull that up. Maybe I'll pull that up real quick. In that uh, in that lawsuit, I say because it, I'm kind of I'm I'm you know um, how would you put it? Let's see. I'll do a search for it. Anybody could actually say this, too, by the way, because once you understand what United States is, here it is right here. Demandant fails to be a martial law 14th Amendment citizen, and it's impossible for the demandant to be a U.S. citizen because he failed to be born or naturalized, as required by your martial law 14th Amendment. And this is one of the things I'm bringing up. Klaus Schwab and his communist organization, World Economic Forum, has famously said that you will own nothing and be happy. These county of Montag mafia thieves and their bar member mafia handlers are giving them aid and comfort to the communist enemy in a time of war by engaging in the theft of the demandant's land and sort of in support of Schwab's agenda. By assaulting the demandant with their District of Columbia Commerce Clause dictatorship as described herein, which is treason. Oh, one of the things I bring up before that is the Cloward Pivens. Two communists in the 1960s, Cloward and Pivens, outlined their strategy to overthrow our Constitution and seize control of the government with a three-step strategy. Number one, create a deep state to take reprisals against Americans. Uh, uh, B, open the borders, allow millions of foreigners into the country. And C, spend money like mad to destroy the dollar. Well, all of that's going on. Anyways, um, and so uh, then I say Cloward and Piven strategy is being implemented because the borders are open, millions of foreigners are in the country, Congress is spending money with, with no limit, and wrongdoer uh, Stephen McCraw and his Texas Department of Public Safety buddies and his U.S. Homeland Security buddies and their Five Eyes Alliance communist buddies are engaging in war crimes against the demand together with these Connie and Montag Mafia thieves in support of Klaus Schwab. Um, and there's another thing I say here. Oh, I, I actually... Um, We were attacked in a biological warfare agent in 2019, 2020, and President Trump locked down the Cheyenne Mountain and other military installations, and they remake lockdown to this day. And certain elements of the military are on a wartime footing because we were attacked and are at war. And all wrongdoers named herein are giving aid and comfort to the enemy in a time of war. And the demand believes that officers of this District of Columbia corporate, so-called court, 
are also giving aid and comfort to the enemy, and the demandant is building a case for the war crimes tribunals that are currently underway. Um, I just get right up in their face. Oh, and then I say all wrongdoers named herein are notified that if they want a piece of the demandant, all they need to do is name a date, time, and loca- uh, date, time, and place, and the demandant will come armed. We can settle it for once and for all. But the demandant knows they'll never take him up on that because they're cowards, as evidenced by their minor estate scam. And the first thing they do is make sure the demandant is unarmed to make sure he's unable to defend himself, as evidenced by their metal detectors in their so-called courts. Anyway, so I'm 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 kind of railing on them there. You know what I mean? <laughs> But uh, so the best defense is a good offense. So anyways, and so I accuse him of uh, of all of that stuff. Anyways, so let's go back to the uh, the uh, <coughs> uh, notice and demand that I sent to uh, Catherine Phillips. She's the Montag County Tax Assessor Collector. Okay, they were sending me threat letters, basically. So uh, this is a standard one. I accept your oath of office. Um, that uh, uh, equality of the law is paramount and mandatory by law. Uh, as implied by your oath, if you think or assume you're representing me, you're fired. Um, and you'll notice that is implied by your oath that neither you nor any man or woman or any person is competent in dealing in any of my affairs. Um, your notice is implied by your oath that I'm competent in dealing in all of my affairs. It's all about competence and incompetence. And so you have to be competent. You have to know what you're talking about. If you're incompetent, then they sent you to a mental institution. Anyways, uh, you're notice that any communication by you to your successors or subordinates shall be signed under penalty of perjury. They never say anything under penalty of perjury. Um, that my proper postal address, and in the event you uh, your mail is not shown exactly like this in any communication to me, it is further agreed by you, your subordinates, and your successors, that you intend to engage in mail fraud. So I accuse them of mail fraud, too. Um, um, our notice is that the Roman cult K Trust, Winningham Glen, is a dead thing, and any attempt to communicate with your Roman cult K Trust is fraud, and you're actually communicating with me, and, and I would be required to file mail fraud charges and use this as evidence that it's intentional. I'm a Texas national, peaceful inhabitant. So I'm laying the foundation. It says here, somebody in Kim Jones' office or your office is engaged in multiple felonies, including but not limited to all the felonies described herein by criminally converting my appellation into Winningham Glen, which is designed to engage in the theft of my land, threaten me, injure me, coerce me, intimidate me, and the free exercise of my rights under color of law and other crimes. You'll notice that you're presumed to know the law, court cases that talk about it. You'll notice the maximum of law, justum generis, sections are listed the same kind of entities. You'll notice that I do not have any first-hand knowledge being born, and anything else about any birth is hearsay and inadmissible as evidence in any court, but I can tell you that I do remember finishing high school in 1975, over 40 years ago. Therefore, I'm well past the age of majority. You'll notice that I do not exist by your permission or anyone else's permission. And that's that McCullough versus Maryland case. All subjects over which the sovereign power of the state extend are objects of taxation, but those over which it does not extend are exempt from taxation. This proposition may be pronounced as self-evident. The sovereignty of the state extends to everything which exists by its authority or its permission. And so I go through some of the definitions here. Um, And this is a a general one. Uh, um, The use of any statutes, codes, rules, regulations, or course citations within any document created by me at any time is only notice that that which is applicable to you and is not intended nor shall it be construed to mean that I have conferred, submitted to, or entered into any jurisdiction alluded to thereby. (laughs) I actually got that. Somebody else had that, and I I thought it was brilliant, and I use it all the time. Uh, Anyways... um, your notice of those public servants who pursue their oath cease to represent the government, waive any immunity, or presume to know the law, or are in fact a covered law enforcement agent. 
You'll notice that a taxpayer is a person as defined in Texas tax code. Uh, you'll notice that the act which precipitated all of this is the one that I mentioned at the beginning, 12 stat 292, where there's a commission paid for every dollar collected at 12 stat 308, which evidences your extortion motivation. And this is 12 stat 308, 1861, and there shall be allowed to be collectors appointed under this act and full compensation for their services and that of their deputies in carrying this act into effect, a commission of 4%. Okay, that's 1861 and it's 4%. Who knows what it is now? Upon the first $100,000, 1% upon the second $100,000, uh, one half of 1% upon all sums above $200,000. Um, you'll notice that you're required to have an oath of office, and that's a 12 stat 296 to 297. Uh, with the pains and penalties of perjury. Just a second. Okay, I'm back. Okay. Uh, you notice that the Constitution of the United States of America is the supreme law of the land. Article 1, Section 10, Clause 1 requires only gold or silver coin to be used in the payment of a debt. And they go into Federal Reserve notes and their, their, uh, their Texas tax code requires Federal Reserve notes. Federal Reserve notes are to be used in the District of Columbia, and a person's only a fictitious entity. Federal Reserve notes are forced loans, military script, fake money. And the Texas Constitution says ad valorem taxes are prohibited, and that's an ad valorem tax too, by the way. Notice that property used for the production of income can be taxed or rendered, or property the person manages or controls a fiduciary for a K trust may be rendered, but I fail to render my land because, since it fails to apply to me. But I'm led to believe someone in your office did render my land without authority. You'll notice that the Supreme Court of the United States has defined income as corporate profits. Therefore, income is always denominated in Federal Reserve notes or their equivalent. You'll notice that it's impossible to pay anything with the Federal Reserve note, but instead they discharge debt with limited liability. And that uh, I, I talks about the deed. Uh, you're required to know that 25 each United States of America, Silver Eagle, one troy ounce pure silver coins, each of which has a face value of $1 for a total value of $25 in lawful money as payment in full, was used to pay for this land as evidenced by the face of the grant deed and bill of exchange. And you're required to know that I am a man as evidenced by the face of the grant deed and bill of exchange. You're required to know that all corporations are dead and corporations have no right except what are granted by statute, but I have unlimited rights. And uh, here's some court cases, U.S. versus Morris. Every citizen or freeman is endowed with certain rights and privileges to enjoy, which no written law or statute is required. These are fundamental or natural rights recognized among all free people. A general rule, men have a natural right to do anything which their inclinations may suggest. It would be not evil in itself and in nowhere impairs the rights of others. You're required to know that I was granted all the rights and privileges as a man of the original land patent, which was uh, granted survey number 547, granted to W. Marlett and his heirs or assigns forever. And I'm an assign. And there's no reservations for taxes. It's impossible for me to be a fiduciary for your satanic Roman cult, Sesque Trust, or anything else because I'm not a person. You'll notice that by demanding Federal Reserve notes, you're bringing District of Columbia territorial codes on the land of Texas in violation of Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17 of the Constitution, which is evidence that you intend to purge your oath of office in violation of Texas Penal Code. You'll notice that because you're dealing with Federal Reserve notes, you've waived any sovereignty you may have enjoyed. You've also waived any immunities you may have enjoyed. 
Your notice that you're failing to provide me with a Republican form of government is required by the supreme law of the land, which is evidence of another perjury of oath. Your notice that you and your subordinates have subjected me under color of your codes, rules, and regulations to the deprivation of my land in violation of 18 U.S.C. 242, which originated with the Act of Congress. That act is, that's where it started, that Act of Congress right here. So that's that's an act with that with that act that that started the taxes. It, it, it's a it says the title of the act is uh, an act to pay for ta uh, pay for interest on the debt um, to regulate imports and to pay interest on the debt something like that. And you're conspiring together to threaten me, intimidate me, oppress me, injure me, and in the free exercise of my right to ignore your color of law appraisals assessment and delinquent tax statement in violation of 18 U.S.C. 241. You'll notice that you and your accomplices have ceased to represent the government. Therefore, you're impersonating government officials by purporting to exercise the function of a tax assessor collector. And that's uh, Texas. That's a class three felony in Texas. Uh, yeah, it's an offense under this section is a felony of the third degree. And your pretended official acts and pretended official authority are unconstitutional corporation only and, only ha and no lawful existence of the con constitutional laws of the United States or of Texas. And you have no duty, obey, a duty to obey an unconstitutional law. You're notice that you are obstructing by force the free exercise of Christian religious beliefs by subjecting me to a satanic religious ceremony by denying common law money, gold or silver coin, as found in the Holy Bible, with lies and fraud in a foreign unconstitutional jurisdiction under private international law and your Roman cult handlers in violation of 18 U.S.C. 247. And this is like serious because it's like uh, 30 years in jail if you get convicted of this one. Yeah, it says here, uh, if death results... Uh, or if such acts include kidnapping or attempt to commit aggravated sexual abuse, attempt to commit aggravated sexual abuse, or an attempt to kill, a fine in accordance with this title and imprisonment for any term of years or for life or for both or may be sentenced to death. Because civil law, Roman civil law, Roman law, and municipal law are convertible phrases. Uh, Roman law, municipal law, and Roman civil law are convertible phrases. That's that one we just talked about. And there's a maximum of Roman law that he was willing to be deceived, be deceived. And you lie, cheat, steal, engage in fraud and deception when you can criminally convert my name into Winningham Glen in this case, which is a Roman cult Sestake Trust. And that's uh, that definition in Tomlin's Law Dictionary. Under the Code of Law for the District of Columbia, an act to establish a code of law for the District of Columbia says to K use the legal estate to be in the says to K use. They can't say they didn't know. I told them all about this. And you presume I'm dead. And the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob claims all the gold and silver, which is lawful money. The silver is mine and the gold is mine, saith the Lord of hosts. Haggai 2 and 8, which is the only lawful money. At common law, only gold or silver are legal tender. And Federal Reserve notes are not God's lawful money. Therefore, they are Satan's fake money, military script, force loans, I'll use. And you are of your father, the devil, and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not the truth, because there's no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh his abode, for he's a liar and the father of it. And you're all Satanists and will reap the reward of Satanists. But the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. You are notice that you are engaged in a seditious conspiracy to assault me with your martial law. Uh, you are notice that you are engaged in official oppression, which is a felony if it's to benefit the Texas Education Agency, otherwise it's a Class A misdemeanor. Well, the Texas Education Agency, so that it is a felony. You notice that the delink tax statement is a threat letter in violation of 18 U.S.C. 876. You notice that I have a right to be left alone. You uh, hereby notice and demand to see a bona fide contract by which I have agreed to your taxes. 
This is a good faith attempt to get you to correct your records by taking my land off your tax rolls and your failure to provide a bona fide contract by which I have knowingly, willingly, intentionally agreed to your taxes and any further communication attempting to collect the taxes extortion or because of any non-payment of your taxes extortion shall be multiple felonies, including but not limited to all the crimes described herein. And this notice and demand shall be evidence of your intent to engage in all the crimes, including but not limited to those described herein. And it shall be further evidence that Clay Riddle, Kim Jones, Jennifer Finoglio, and others intend to be your accomplices and co-conspirators, as well as your agreement that I file criminal complaints to you and bar grievances against all bar members in your private capacity and seek other remedies. Okay, and that's it. Um, and here's their delinquent tax statement that I attached. And uh, so I think that they're going to have a tough problem here. If this thing gets, if this, you know, we'll see what happens. Uh, they're going to have a tough problem. And this is proof of service, registered mail. So, um, so that's like 19 pages total with the registered with the proof of service. So that's what, 16 pages. The um, uh, the actual notice is not that bad. It's actually pretty short compared to some of my notices that I send out. But uh, that you know they're going to have a problem. Actually, it's not even sixteen. It's thirteen pages. Yep, page thirteen. First of June, twenty twenty two. So they're going to have a problem, I think. Um, I'm asking the court to uh, have the U have the FBI arrest them. And I don't think, I can't see how they could not arrest them, quite frankly. But, you know, you just never know, you know. Anyways, so, um, yeah, that's the uh, notice and demand that I served on them. Um, you want to see the Grant Deaton Bill of Exchange that I did? That you created from scratch yourself, or is it the original? Well, I, I, I brought forward all the rights and privileges of the land patent. But uh, but I the Grant Deaton Bill of Exchange is uh, what I did myself. Um, nice, yes, definitely. It's it's to. attached, so let's let's find it. This is all stuff I filed into their so-called court. So there's, uh, this is the rendition form. <laughs> they have a form. See right here? General real property rendition. And it says right here, it says, rendering such property is optional. The chief appraiser may render, may require rendition that's not mandated by the tax code. Well, they're, they're liable for that. So I want to know who rendered it. And so I'm going to be going out there when I serve this stuff, and I'm going to say, who rendered this property? And uh, we'll see what happens. I, there's a lady that I know that uh, that went and confronted the Tarrant County and said, who rented my property? I'm going to sue their butt off. And they immediately came back and said, don't worry, we'll take it off the tax code. Well, sorry, it's too late. I want to know who rented it. You're, this is your lawsuit. You're sued. Anyways, this is the Grant Deaton Bill of Exchange. Uh, the grantor, it was uh, owned by a trust. The grantor, upon receipt of 25 each, United States of America, Silver Eagle, one Troy, pure silver coins, each of which has a face value of $1 for a total value of $25 in lawful money. See, that brings it into a common law court under the Sixth Amendment or the Seventh Amendment, one of those two. As payment in full, does hereby convey, grant, and exchange to Glenn Winningham, House of Fern, a man on the soil of Texas, holder of the Office of the People, a Texas national who fails to be a SSK Trust U.S. citizen, the grantee, full title, legal and equitable to the following described real property situated in the land of Montague County and the land of Texas. And so, um, yeah, that's it. And there's two signatures on it. So there's a grantee and a grantor and a grantee. Most of these deeds have one signature on it, so it's really not a valid contract. But when there's two signatures on it, it's a valid contract. This is the the uh, land patent. Now, the original land patent is quite a bit larger. Those things are on big paper, uh, so it's kind of shrunk down. But uh, but that's it right there. It's one of the ones that was done where it was handwritten. 
You don't see those, uh, the newer ones don't. This was done in, let's see, what year was it done? 1,800 and, oh, no, that's 160 acres. It was originally sold. It was granted by, by the state of Texas in... Thirtieth day of January in the year of our Lord one thousand eight hundred and seventy-seven, eighteen seventy-seven, and so uh, most of it is handwritten, and um, so his uh, it's a total of one hundred and sixty acres, thereby relinquishing to him the said William Marlette and his heirs or assigns forever, all right and title in and to said land heretofore held and possessed by said state, and I do certify, uh, hereby issue this letter patent for the same. So I'm telling you, there's nothing better than this land patent. It doesn't reserve any mineral rights or anything. No specific rights of use, yes. Yeah, exactly. No liens, no taxes, no um, no um, easements, no nothing. And uh, anyways, um, there's some of these land patents. Like there's a friend of mine that um, that got some land in Austin, and the land patent on that one gave him like a league, <laughs> and a league is like about ten thousand acres. <laughs> But those land patents are old, like really old, you know, maybe even before the Civil War. It could be Republic of Texas written across the top. But again, you know, that is that is that's as powerful as it gets. And um, this is for 160 acres. And so uh, anyways. Um, You've had it since 2009 how, how, or 30 years. How long have you owned it? Um. Well, I bought it in uh, 21st day of September. That's when I got it. It was filed on the 29th of September. I'll be back in a sec. Land patents in Texas are easy to get a hold of, too. The uh, Texas Land Commissioner, they, there's an 800 number you call up. You tell them you want their historical department. And then you just give them the street address. They have a database or computer that tells them what land patent was issued on that land. And, of course, you might have a city lot, but, you know, it could have been a league or something, you know, 10,000 acres that was granted. But all you need is the land patent, and you have all the rights and privileges of that original land patent. There's a guy by the name of Ron Gibson, lives out in Oregon, and he's got quite an elaborate process 
And, uh, you know, according to his process, you know, mine has is, is got defects. There's no doubt about it. But uh, so it is not perfect. Technically, what you're supposed to do is get a meets and bounds legal description. And um, you're supposed to uh, do a title search. And um, back between, you know, where, who you bought it from back to the beginning. But I found that a lot of it depends on how corrupt they are. A lot of times it'll work with defects. And, um, you know, but if you're prepared to defend it, you know, it'll still work. Now, this one's got lots of defects. There's no meets and bounds legal description. There's no title search. Well, they hide all um, those original land maps here in Communist. Actually, uh, in Canada, you go to land titles. Yeah, but you have to talk really nice to whoever, if you can get somebody to actually, you know, be at the desk because nobody's there. It's all electronic. Well, yeah, you gotta if you gotta get get someone there. That's true. Um, I don't know. That, that's entirely possible. Um, I'm copying the lawsuit, so if you hear me shuffle on paper here, it's because uh, I'm, it's it's a lawsuit that got copied, and I'm getting ready to staple it. Don't you bind them? You know the lawyers do that thought. stuff, but I'm not a lawyer, and I don't care. And they work just fine, even though they're not bound. Right. And actually, if you read the rules, it just says it has to be bound, and a staple is binding. What happens is when the clerk gets it, they'll, they'll, they'll uh, undo the staple and scan it all up anyways. So, um, you know... I don't think it matters. Right. Me either. There's just some people that are anal about that sort of thing. So your friend that's dealing with the exact same situation, um, is he being, does he have the same amount of land as what you, you hold as well? Like what's, why are they attacking him in your view? Sorry, what was that? I was just wondering about your friend that's dealing with the same situation. You said you were preparing the collateral attack for him. Oh, he's, well. he's he, his isn't to do with land, his but it is doing to uh, code enforcers. Oh, yeah, which is all the more reason why they have no authority. So, oh, okay. I was just wondering if he had held as much land as what you're currently. Um, you know, um, defending over. Yeah, they have no entitlement whatsoever. So, of course it's going to work, Glenn. Of course. Does anybody have any well, questions about what uh, Glenn is, how uh, Glenn his, is... His issue, his issue is over uh, a bill of attainder. That's all. It's nothing to do with land. It's uh, something else. But it's all bills of attainder. Everything they do, any statute is a bill of attainder. So this is <clears throat> the rendition form. This is actually one you can fill out. You can uh, see I can type stuff into it. If you see that I'm doing that there. It's one of those <clears throat> fillable form. It's published by the uh, Texas Comptroller for Public Accounts. Okay, so they're a deputy clerk then. Yeah.
I think that's great that you make your own forms so that you're showing, you know, that shows that you're not uh, abiding by what they want you to do. Yeah. Well, you're talking yeah. about the Form 1020? Uh, no, not, well, that, and then this one, you said you're filling it in yourself. You created this one yourself because you created it yourself, correct? No, that one's published by the Texas Comptroller of Public Accounts. But I can I can fill it in. I mean, it says appraisal district property identification number, so you put in the, their number. You oh, see what auto I'm saying? Fill. Yeah, autofill. I get it. I get it. Yeah, the auto, sorry, the autofill is dangerous in my view. So that's 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 actually the lawsuit and the attachments. This is all attached to that lawsuit. And this, they sent me this, and it's unsigned, and there's lawyer is not even putting their name on it. And I, mean, I, I think this is big time problem for them. I'll bet you I'll get somebody disbarred over that. It says, I have recommended to my client that a lawsuit be filed against you for seeking foreclosure of the tax lien. And so they're saying there's a tax lien, and um, um, and they're not even saying who they are. So I, I'm, I'm calling that bear tree. <laughs> so we'll see. I'm 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 suing all those lawyers in their private capacity. Will you have now, it notarized, Glenn? Sorry? Will you have it notarized before you send it out? No. Um what I do is right here. I, demandant, sui juris, natural man living in the Republic, do declare that I scribed and read the foregoing facts, and in accordance with my best first-hand knowledge, such are true, correct, complete, not misleading, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, before God, angels, and everybody who reads this document as witnesses, pursuant to your rules of evidence. Signed and sealed in red ink on the land, under penalties of perjury. 28 U.S.C. 1746-1. Now, if you look up <clears throat> 28 U.S.C. 1746-1. That's saying without the United States. Of course, I put that down here, too. But anyways. Demand for relief to the District of Columbia clerk selling their just us. So anyways, the man that requires the bonds of all bar members named herein, not a penny more, not a penny less, and their bar card revoked because all bar members are deemed to know the law. Therefore, it was deliberate, calculated, and malicious. The man that requires the minor estate to be dissolved and liquidated yesterday, not today, yesterday. And the demandant does not care what they do with the fake money in the Treasury direct count, wants nothing to do with it. They can put it up their rectal orifice. You know where your rectal orifice is, don't you? You might need to put that in your glossary page. <laughs> so anyway. Anybody have any questions? Hey, Glenn. Um, I wanted to introduce myself. Um, I was learning from your channel since at least 2018, Sovereign Living, so I recognize your voice as soon as you came on um, and definitely have lots of notebooks, you know, filled with stuff I've learned from you over the years. 
Um, I was a founding member of a sovereign nation in Hawaii, uh, Hawaii nation, and we held court regularly, um, did a grand jury one time, but, but you know, it was always a, a matter of enforcement, but I really see that changing, um, especially, you know, with the, the new energies that are coming in as far as that we're really going to be, you know, able to enforce with how many people are waking up. Um, and when you mentioned the war crime tribunals, I'd like to um, collaborate with you on that. That's something that I really see happening. Um, you know, starting like, I I've been gathering evidence for quite a while. And um, I, I see that happening, you know, starting to making the connections this year and probably, you know, really uh, enforcing and, and doing it by next year. So if, if uh, I didn't know if you, you know, check messages or, you know, if I could send you a message or you could send me a message, I'd like to yes. collaborate with you on that. Absolutely. Um, now, uh, <clears throat> make sure you let me know. I get a lot of emails, but um, I'm a senator with the Republic of Texas, and we would definitely be interested in entering into a treaty of peace and recognition with the Kingdom of Hawaii. Yeah, um, we're at, we were actually a, a sovereign nation. So the thing is, is Hawaii, the Kingdom of Hawaii or Hawaii Kingdom came after uh, Hawaii was originally, you know, a, a sovereign nation like every, you know, everybody uh, king or, you know, of their own castle type of thing. Um, this most Hawaiians d don't even know that. Um, so Hawaii nation is, I don't even know what's really going on because I haven't been over there in a while. And, um, our group kind of fell apart even before I left. Like we lost our venue meeting place and just, you know, just kind of disagreements amongst the men and things like that. But, uh, you know, it's still in my heart, and um, I'd like to, you know, collaborate with you uh, regardless. You know, I feel like we can, you know, really make a difference by coming together and doing these tribunals. Um, I have lots of evidence, even from uh, the, the fires in Hawaii. I spent about two months um, really digging in and gathering as much evidence about that. And I just got my Bill Cooper book in the mail today. I'm not sure if you know, you, you know what book I'm talking about? The Old Pale Horse. Yeah, I got the original uh, issue, the, the 1991. Uh, I ordered it. I found it like at a good price online that was like half the price of what everybody else was selling it for, the original one. So... I ordered it. Yeah, I I didn't know that it was 500 pages until I started digging and, and looking at, up some other books because I, I had a copy of the revised version that I got at Barnes & Noble in like 2009 or something like that. It, it was only about like 70 pages or something. But yeah, even then, uh, they required me to show ID to sell it to me back then just, just for that one <laughs> but um, well i can i can tell you that i think we can cliff high talks about in his videos how he sees in his data sets that there'll be common law courts springing up all over the country yeah and they'll be issuing writs to the military sheriffs and the military sheriffs are going to arrest the bureaucrats so you know they will recognize us when we step up and start doing that. But next week That's we're right. going to be talking about how to convene our own common law court and and how we need to start doing that right. and putting these putting these people on trial. Mm -hmm. And um, the uh, so we all nobody knows everything. 
So we're just going to have to figure it out. You know what I mean? But yeah, but there's a few bring, things. Bring forward all the the firsthand evidence that that we all have gathered, and you know, it's all the the whole conspiracy is all laid out. We just have to put it, put the you know name the players and put all the evidence together. Really. Well, the Constitution hey, is. Hey, I'm sorry. I just joined this call and I, I recognize your voice, brother. You have a YouTube channel, yeah? Yes, I do, yep. Yeah, you're the angry guy that's like, fuck these guys. <laughs> I'm just well, kidding. I don't, um, I don't use yeah. that word too often, no, but I do sorry. use it sometimes. Pardon, pardon my mouth. I mean, they can shove it up their orifices, basically, nonetheless. <laughs> basically, no, you're talking yeah. about his friend. Carrie, he that? says to tell the uh, IRS to go and fuck off and die. That's his friend Carrie. That's not Glenn. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to get you guys confused. I was just excited to hear your voice. I have watched some of your YouTube content and I heard your voice and I was like, oh, wow, you're on. So I'm sorry if I interrupted. I don't know what you guys were talking about. I just hopped on. Forgive my interruption. So, uh, anyways, we're going to be talking about common law courts next week and um, how we can all convene our own common law courts. It's we the people. The Constitution is brilliant, and we just need to understand what's in it and how we can use it to to help us. And um, and so, uh, um, and I'm open. You can contact me, but. Um, you know, I got bills to pay, so, uh, you know, I like donations. If you want to use a lot of my time, uh, I provide everything for free on my YouTube channel. Matter of fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my website right now. This is my website, SovereigntyInternational.fyi. And if you go to the, the free videos where it says free educational videos, those are links to YouTube videos. And uh, I'll just click on that. And so those are all links to YouTube videos. Some of those, a few, very few, have been taken down by YouTube, but most of them are still up. YouTube actually took my channel down twice, and both times they send you an email and say, uh, we took your channel down. If you got something to say about it, respond to this email. And um, both times I gave them the same answer. Matter of fact, I have a video up there Um uh, YouTube took my channel down again. <laughs> Anyways, both times I responded the same way, and I told him, you're engaged in multiple felonies. You're violating my rights under the color of law felony. You're conspiring to threaten, coerce, injure, intimidate me in the free exercise of my rights, another felony. You're subjecting me to your satanic religious ceremony with your, your uh, sorcerer, your pharmaceuticals. And uh, and your lies and your fraud and your deception, and your uh, your engaged in war crimes, taking reprisals against me for my political beliefs, and and with your forced medical experiment, I'm going to sue your butt off. All your executive officers and board of directors are personally liable in their private capacity. Don't think I don't know what to do because I've been to the U.S. Supreme Court five times. You're next, and 15 minutes later, my channel's back up. So. Um, so what my point is that um, they have taken it down. It's back up. And and after they did it the second time, I went and filed felony criminal complaints against every member of their board of directors because that's who's responsible. And they fired the CEO of YouTube, and they have a new CEO. And things haven't changed that much. They have changed a little bit. Um, but but uh, so... Um, if you bring up the right issues, you get results. So again, and and we've talked about this on this channel, on this program, about the WFAA TV, Johnny Johnson versus WFAA TV, which is a Dallas case that went on in Dallas in 1995, and that's it's it's uh, pinned on my page on the We Are Law Telegram channel. And um, it talks about what happened is uh, 
Johnny Johnson took a, a judgment to the common law court and got a billion dollar judgment against WFAA TV and sent it to Dun & Bradstreet. And Dun & Bradstreet, WFAA TV couldn't get insurance. They couldn't get anything from Wall Street. And so what happened is uh, they had to file a lawsuit in the 14th District Court in Dallas to get that judgment vacated. And the court said, I can't do that. And it's res judicata. And so WFAA TV had to file bankruptcy. So, so what my point is, is that these judgments, if it's done right, are powerful. You have no idea the power that you have. And that's we, the people, getting together and, and convening our common law juries. And we'll be talking about that next week on how we can do that. And so, um, hopefully, uh, some people show up and want to hear about it. But if no matter what, um, it'll be on YouTube because all of these videos get uploaded to YouTube. And uh, so this is my website. And if you go to the free read files, someone mentioned that they took notes. Well, if you go to these read files right here, all of my videos are PowerPoint presentations. And what I do is I make a PDF file of that PowerPoint presentation. And those PDF files are right here. And there's other files here too. But the PDF files are all here for those PowerPoint presentations. And then there's also some uh, uh, generic forms that you can use right here um, to uh, uh, declaration of criminal complaint, corporate denial affidavit, <clears throat> anyways so that's here in these free files and and what you'll have to do is you download them now in the show notes of my videos the more recent videos the files aren't uploaded to here and so you have to go into the show notes of the video and there'll be files that are on google docs that are uh, linked in the show notes of the video and and but don't be contacting me, asking me to get access. Okay, what you do is you download that file, save it onto your hard drive, and then you can do with it what you wish. But don't be contacting me to get access because you have the link. The link will give you access to download it. And that's it. I'm not giving people access to Google Docs to be messing with my files. And so uh, the files are all... Um, they're all, uh, they're there, but they're only there for you to download, and that's it. So, um, anyways, and uh, let me, uh, I'll pull up my YouTube channel, too. And then you'll see what my YouTube channel. And many of you, if you've watched my videos, you've already seen this. Luna Glenn has his own room in here, so um, you can uh, get in touch with him in his room as well. So I guess it just okay, came up. Gratitude. Yeah, so that's this is my front page of my YouTube channel, but the videos are hard to find because there's over 500 videos. So that's why you go to my website and, and you can, uh, that's why you go to the website and you watch the you go to the watch the free videos they're organized by general topics and uh and you can you can uh, uh study by general topics so it's all free so if you contact me you know i'm probably going to ask for a donation um so that it's all free 
All you do is you go to the video and watch the video. You can you can download the file from the free files page on my on my website, or you can uh, go to the show notes of the video, and there's there's links to files there too, that are not on the read files on the website. And uh, so if you contact me, I'm probably going to be wanting a donation. Can I ask a question? Sure. I was just wondering uh, what your thought, what your thought process was with the estate. Are you trying to liquidate everything and get everything back and tell them to go pound sand, or what is your thought process with the estate? Well, the estate's a fraud, and if you participate in a fraud, then you can't claim fraud. And if you participate in the fraud, then you don't have clean hands. And these are all courts of equity. And if you want to get a remedy from these courts of equity, you have to have clean hands. Equity will not give a remedy if you don't have clean hands. Participating in the fraud means unclean hands. So I want it dissolved and liquidated but I don't care what they do with the fake money. Quite frankly, they'll probably have to give it to me because there's nobody else to give it to, but I don't care. I really don't care. I want nothing to do with it. I want the damn thing dissolved and liquidated because it's a badge of slavery. And and that's that's my position. And if you see that lawsuit that I just showed you, that's what I say in it. And um, the bottom line is I want it dissolved and liquidated. And it's a fraud. I mean, a lot of, I think a lot of us can see like how we can claim fraud. Like, yeah, this is definitely fraud. We weren't aware of it when we were born. We never signed up for this. We weren't aware of what we were doing. But at the same point in time, if there's a system created that you can operate in and control and claim back credits that you've spent and utilize the system for good, would you not want to perhaps entertain that idea? I mean, if you could go so, back. So you're a Satanist then? I mean, you want fake money. It sounds like you want fake money. No, you're a Satanist. That's satanic. It's satanic. It's diabolically okay. evil. Okay. How does so that make it satanic? That's one way to look at it. Okay. And I'm not disagreeing with your perspective because I've thought that myself as well. But also, if there's a system in place for us to take over that authority that they've had over us, for us to be the rulers of our own kingdom and use that for the operation of good. Could That's we a lie. Exercise That's that? a lie. You're participating in a fraud. You're literally getting in a contract with the devil. And the people that are peddling that are Jesuits. And uh, so you're literally getting in a contract with the devil. I want nothing to do with it. It's satanic, it's evil, and I want it dissolved and liquidated yesterday. And and you're getting something for nothing. It's it's you're 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 sitting there, they're peddling their satanic drivel is what they're peddling. I don't see it as getting something for nothing. I don't see it as getting something for nothing, well, right? Because that's all the of end of this lives, discussion. They've utilized our estates. They've utilized our estates and okay, you're muted. Because uh, that's the end of this discussion. Um, it's it's not your estate. It's found in the Code of Federal Regulations, which means it's United States property. Anything under the regulations is property of the United States. It's not yours. And uh, you might have an interest in it, but it's evil and, and it's satanic. And so and uh, I'm not interested in debating it. Um, if you want to talk about it, Go to somebody else's page that wants to talk about it. I don't want to talk about it. I'm not interested in it, and I want it out of here. And so, uh, and that's not negotiable. So uh, that's the end of that discussion. Um, so are all churches also satanic? A lot of them are because they really don't know what it means to be a Christian. Um. You know, if you know what it means to be a Christian, um, most of them, most of these churches are just, first of all, they're collecting fake money. 
and um, and and the, the fake money is satanic. Um, most of them are. They, they they claim to be Christian, uh, but but they have no idea. They don't they don't preach Christianity. They preach something else, half truths. When, when and, you say and, money, uh, you mean the the federal like a Federal Reserve note, like the the green like papers. Right, that's fake money. This I've got a, some. A, I've got some real money thing. here, and it's it's a silver eagle coin with a face value of one dollar. That's real money. That's fake money. That other stuff is fake money. That paper, that's all fake money. I read it. I read it to you in this lawsuit that it's in the Gold Reserve Act of 1934, and uh, talks about it. Federal Reserve notes are are for the government only. Well, it's it's a um, a promise to pay. It's a promissory note. It's the same. It's equivalent to like let's say a purchase order at a car dealership. You know, you can call it whatever you want. A hundred dollar bill. It's the Bible says no, no, like that's, that's only gold or silver coin is lawful money. Okay. <laughs> And, and common law, only gold or silver coin is lawful money. And the Constitution, only gold or silver coin is lawful money. And that's it. And that's not negotiable. And I'll mute you if you continue on with this path. So uh, um, that's that's not negotiable. It's it's fake money. And um, and 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 quite frankly, you need to re-examine what you're doing because. Um, you know, at, there's going to be a judgment day, and we're all going to be held accountable. And uh, if you believe in, in in God and Christianity and stuff like that, you know, you want to be blameless on judgment day. And um, so, you know, yeah, I don't. Yeah. No, I appreciate not being good. Um, and so I won't. I won't proceed with that part of the conversation. Good. But I do good. have a relationship with God. Uh, I, I do consider myself to be a follower of Christ. I do good. use money in, in contracts, and I don't believe that's going to be the, the damnation of my soul is, is using those contracts. Um, so I was just born into this, this day and age. You know, and I, I don't I know what to tell to, you. I use it too, here. because I have to, but not because I want to, it's because I have to. Yeah, but and, that and I'd rather not, soul, right. You know, okay. You're muted too. Um, the uh, it's fake money. The only thing that's lawful money, I use it because I have to. And if you want to use that private money system, you're getting in a contract with the devil, and that's your choice. It's a free country; you can do that. But I I hope, and it's not up to me to decide. And I'm glad it's not up to me to decide. But. I, I, I'm concerned about people like that on Judgment Day. They might not come out as good as they think. You know, that's all I can say. I, it's not up to me to decide. And I don't try and judge people. And I don't try and, uh, uh, you know, uh, but that's 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 my attitude. And and if you're going to be here talking about this, then, um, then I'll mute you. And um, so, you know, it's... That's why I put it in my lawsuit. We'll see what happens. That's all I can say. Uh, you never know what happens with a lawsuit. I suppose that's about it. Um, we've been going. How long have we been going, Lori? Um, about two hours now. So, yeah, I appreciate um, your view on that uh, standpoint. Um, but others are on, you know, their paths of, how they want to approach it and they have to they have to stand in in uh, what they're saying stating so but i want you to know that from my standpoint i completely respect uh, your view and you don't uh, waver from it so i appreciate you bringing all that information forward next week we get to discuss um how to form your own common law court I'll be here, um, talk to you Friday morning, and uh, I look forward to our chat then. Thank you very much, Glenn. 
All right. I think that's about it for today. And I uh, appreciate everybody listening. If we want to know about common law courts next week, um, I'll, that's what I'll be talking about is how to convene your own common law court. And the nice thing about a common law court is a common law court can kind of straddle the fence a little bit uh, with that stuff that you're talking about. Uh, that's not something that I really want to talk about, but with your common law court, you can talk about that. That WFA TV case, they talked about the Uniform Commercial Code in there, and it was upheld. And so um, so you're welcome to do whatever you want to do with your common law court. It's we the people, and we the people make the law. We'll go through that, how that happens. We the people make the law. We the people are the law. And... Um, and um, so I'll have a little PowerPoint presentation that we'll go through that talks about court cases and things like that, how that comes about, and um, and about how we the people make the law. And um, so that's the wonder of the beautiful thing about our Constitution and uh, about America. And, and it is so powerful if you do it right. And um, so... Um, if, if you want to participate in that, um, I don't, I don't choose to participate in that, but I'm not, I'm trying not to judge people, people, it's a free country. You can do whatever you want to do as long as you don't damage someone's person or their property. And so, um, and the common law court can straddle the fence on that a little bit. Um, oh, so, no. uh, a lot, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I guess that's about it for today. We'll talk about that next week. Uh, thanks, everybody, for listening, and um, and we'll talk to you next week. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you, and uh, if you could send me the, the video as soon as you get it uh, downloaded, I'd sure appreciate it because I'm going to put it on my YouTube channel. Certainly will. Thank you. Hi, Glenn. I just wanted to say hello. Thank you. Hello. Hey, guys. Yeah, Glenn's been on here for...